So when it comes to the UK, things are getting pretty bad. Because whether it's security tags on one pound chocolate bars, or maybe it's just that our border is wide open, either way things are going pretty downhill. But in order to see just how bad things really are, I'm going to show you quite possibly one of the weirdest months in the UK. Because we started the month off with a pretty strange one. Because you got these photos here from the National Maritime Museum in Cornwall. And as you can see on screen, they've got an illegal migrant boat just in the museum. Just a boat that was used by people to break into our country. Now they've got it for everyone to just see. Almost as if they're just taking the mick out of our laws. But to be fair, some laws do need to have the mickey taken. Because you can see this one here, it says, Do you keep chickens in your back garden? Register them now or break the law. And what this essentially is, is basically a chicken register. Just for all sorts of species of birds as well. Things like pigeons, as you can see there. But it's just the government just making sure that you have a license. If you want to keep a couple of birds. Like we do always see Americans just making that joke. About how you need a license to do pretty much anything in the UK. Like when they talk about their licenses, they're really not joking. It is absolutely true. But whilst the government are trying to make you register your chickens, when it comes to asylum seekers, yeah, it's a completely different story. Because you can see here, it says that Nottingham Council has approved a five-year healthcare plan worth £684,000. And I know exactly what you're thinking, because you're absolutely correct. We already have the NHS, which is already strapped for cash. Like, they just go around, just left, right and centre. Just saying that the British healthcare system is absolutely bankrupt. But here we are. And we've still got almost three quarters of a million pounds just for asylum seekers. But the money doesn't stop there. Because the very next day, we saw that Britain was given Albania a million and a half pounds. And this is as part of a four million pound package as well. But what we're getting for the... Well, what Albania... <laughs> What Albania is getting for the money is we're building them new prisons. So very similar to the last story that we saw, where the NHS is strapped for cash, but we're giving money to migrants. Our prison system apparently is absolutely stretched. But instead of this £4 million a year, just going towards the British prisons, here we are just building them in Albania. And it really is articles like that. Which means that I don't think anyone's going to be surprised at this next chart. Because YouGov are asking, do Brits think that immigration has been too high or too low in the last 10 years? And as you can see on screen there, that is 68% of people just think that it's too high. Like, it just really goes to show. The media and the politicians want you to feel like you're alone. But, I mean, when you look at it over here, 68%. Apparently, we're in the majority. Like, I can't stress that to you enough. They want you to feel isolated. And they want you to think that your opinions are just, like, completely far out there. But they're really not. Because that's almost three quarters. That means if you see four people on the street, according to these numbers, three of those four people think that immigration is too high. I gotta tell you, it won't last long. But I'm pretty optimistic from this one. But like I said, that optimism did not last long. Because the very next day, we saw that Glasgow was looking to charge people £300 for something that they're calling a carbon-based parking permit. And this is not 300 quid to park in the centre of Glasgow. This extends to the front of people's houses. So it's essentially a pretty bad situation on two fronts. Because that means potentially spaces are going to be limited. And now they've got to pay 300 quid just to park in front of their house. And it's not like the councils are going to do anything good with the money. Because we can see here from the very same week that Northumberland Council has agreed to spend £1.2 million. And as you can see on screen, this is going to homes for refugees. Like just money just given to random people from random places. Quite literally just being paid to live next door to you. Like can you imagine that? Like we can talk all we want, but genuinely speaking... Like half a dozen to a dozen families are going to have to live next door to these people. And I've got to tell you, headlines like that one, they pretty much explain the next one. Because you can see Keir Starmer's approval rating, which at this point in time, it is the worst it's ever been. 
I mean, just since the election, like that really is a massive swing. To go from positive to 11 to minus 16. That really just goes to show just how bad of a job they're doing. And speaking of jobs which nobody wants, we saw the BBC reduce 130 of them from news and current affairs. And they were closing things like the BBC Asian Network, which kind of makes you wonder to yourself. Like when someone loses their job, it's never good. But if the BBC is just going to fill it with stuff like the BBC Asian Network, if they're going to fill it with that, they must know at some point in time it's got to fall down. Like you can't just expect everything to work. So when they're trying like BBC Asia, BBC Nigeria, they really shouldn't be surprised when it just doesn't play out. But it's not just the BBC that are making weird decisions. Because pretty much the very next day, we saw that 62,000 more migrants might be recognised as refugees. And you might be sat there, similar to myself, sat there thinking, you know, hang on a sec, there isn't really a difference between the two. You know, migrants, refugees, it doesn't matter what you want to call them. I mean, you know, I kind of interchange between the two. So when it comes to these definitions, all this is going to do is just allow these 62,000 people into the UK. Like at the moment, they're migrants. Like it's one of the, It doesn't really make any sense. One word should not make a single bit of difference. But this is just the government just doing what they do best. But then we saw possibly the worst article that we've seen from Sadiq Khan. Because it says that Transport for London has seized 1,400 vehicles. And this is from people who haven't paid their ULES fine. So not only do these people need to pay a tax to enter their capital city, if they don't, then this absolute donor is going to try and take their car. And I'll put another statistic on the screen that came up in the article. But they made 710,000 out of nearly 800 vehicles. Which means that Sadiq Khan has basically taken 800 cars off of Londoners and then sold them for £887.50 each. Like, you imagine that. They've lost the family car. They've lost their method of transport to get to work. And they've lost the ability to do the school run. Just because Sadiq Khan would like an extra £887. Like I said, that has got to be one of the worst things that Sadiq Khan has done. And it's not just your car that the politicians are looking to take from you. It is also your hard-earned cash. Because this one here that we saw the very next day, it says that James Cleverly spent £655 per person on in-flight catering. And this was for a one-day trip to Rwanda. So just to put that into perspective for you, they've taken a plane to Rwanda and they've spent £655 a person on food. And, like, I mean, one thing which did occur to me, like, when it comes to Africa, maybe you need to take your own food. I'm not quite sure. Word on the street is it wouldn't hurt to take a couple of snacks. But even if it is just for the day like this, there's no reason why they couldn't just grab a Tesco meal deal for a couple of quid. But instead, they'd rather spend £655. But whilst the politicians are robbing us blind, it turns out that it's quite a common theme in the UK. Because we saw that shoplifting in England and Wales has hit a 20-year high with almost half a million offences recorded. Like, imagine that, just half a million cases. And they're only the ones that we know about as well. Like, you imagine just how much slips through the net, and just doesn't get reported for, what, like, or, or even seen. Like, there's got to be a lot of pickpocketers out there that, like, honestly, like I said, they just don't even get noticed. Then once you consider that these shops just aren't calling the police, I really wouldn't be surprised if that figure was at least double. But with all of these articles and all of these stories, you must admit, things really are going pretty downhill. Like, it'd be kind of understandable if these were like a couple of months apart. But most of these stories that you saw in this video, they happened one after each other. Like, just day after day. And it just gets weirder as we go on. But if you enjoyed this video, with migrant boats in British museums, as well as the government making you register your chickens, or maybe it's just seeing a Sadiq Khan donut, either way, if you liked this video, then I would highly recommend to subscribe for tomorrow's, because you won't believe what I've got in store. And as always, thank you for becoming one of the 53,273 subscribers. This country has gone crazy.